Money is a very delicate issue for many, many people. This issue can be so contentious that instead of managing their money, people will avoid the topic altogether and solely focus on earning and spending it. In short, there are two types of people, those who increase their wealth and those who lose it. And in this video, I will share with you 10 money mistakes you must avoid at all costs. And if you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button below for more life-changing content. The truth is that keeping money is a lot harder than making it. It's not uncommon to see people who come into wealth through inheritance, lottery, or other windfalls and lose it in a short amount of time. A good example of someone who earned a ridiculous amount of money but lost it all is the famous boxer Mike Tyson. Despite earning over $300 million in his career, in 2003 he declared bankruptcy and was reported to be in more than $20 million worth of debt. Needless to say that money mistakes happen, and these mistakes can cripple your finances no matter how much money you make. So let's get into the 10 mistakes that you must avoid. 1. Spending on drugs or cigarettes. It may have been enjoyable and harmless to use drugs while in college. However, the reality is that continued use can be detrimental to both your health and your bank account. You can see that many drug and cigarette users are hindering their ability to achieve financial independence if you analyze how much money they spend per week or per year. As a illustration, a pack of cigarettes costs $9.08, and many smokers consume a pack each day. This comes to $3,305.12 each year, or 63.56 per week. The same sum of money might be used to pay your home's property taxes or for a two-week vacation. But regrettably, curiosity and peer pressure play a large role in how many smokers and drug users develop this habit. Long-term effects of this behavior include a significant cost to your wealth and health. As a result, do your best to avoid spending money on these things. 2. Spending more than you make. The temptation to do this, especially as a young adult, can be great. When you are earning a steady paycheck for the first time in your life soon after college, it can be tempting to spend your money. The idea of getting that new automobile, relocating, and traveling in first class is alluring. But the issue with them is that if your salary is insufficient to cover these expenses, you frequently find yourself living paycheck to paycheck. This problem is comparable to lifestyle inflation in which your costs of living rise as your income rises. Your cost of living shouldn't increase just because your income does. The majority of people believe that rewards should be given to themselves once they have been paid. Nevertheless, your wealth should be extended by investments and asset acquisition with the help of this inflow of income. To impress others is likely the main motivation for many to spend more than they can afford. They spend because they have low self-esteem and feel inferior to other people without these financial possessions. But this is faulty reasoning. According to Dave Ramsey, we spend money we don't have on items we don't need to impress people we don't like. We all engage in this to some extent. You can improve your financial situation if you learn to put off gratification and stop worrying about pleasing others. Overspending is also a result of social media. Huge sums of money are spent by those who want to appear wealthy but aren't. An internet business owner, for instance, who is told he would never succeed might purchase a pricey car after he makes his first significant sale in an effort to disprove his detractors, committing the same error of trying to win them over. This method of making an impression is an endless staircase. There will always be someone to compete with or to brag to in life. When your monthly income is only $3,000, you have no business purchasing a device that costs $2,000. Be wise, develop a budget, and keep tabs on your spending to make sure you don't go over your allotted budget. 3. Not investing wisely. Investments can be quite difficult, and many individuals invest their money based on recommendations from friends or a strong belief that the prices of well-known stocks will continue to rise. Nowadays, real estate appears to be a form of asset that almost everyone is interested in. Many people believe that once they have an investment property, their financial situation would be secure. They believe that once rent payments begin to arrive each month, their income will quickly rise. This is regrettably not always the case. There are instances when tenants don't make their payments on time, things break, or your property loses value. There is risk involved with investing of any kind. Prior to investing their hard-earned money in a certain market or product, Sensible investors know that knowledge is the key to making their assets generate a consistent stream of income. In other words, do your research and don't just get into something because your buddies are earning money at it or a salesperson told you about all the fantastic advantages it has to offer. 4. Following get-rich-quick schemes. Schemes to get rich quick are one method to lose money. Following a money scheme would undoubtedly land you in difficulty since, as the phrase goes, quick money causes swift issues. Get rich quick schemes such as Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, and make money overnight offerings are all designed to enrich the scheme's creator at your expense. 
Exercise care if you are considering new business initiatives and come across options that seem to offer high rewards with little risk. Consider this. If it takes a career 20 years to earn $200,000 and a new business claims that you can earn that much in one year, wouldn't everyone be doing it if it were true? In order to sum up, always use your best judgment before signing anything if you want to get money quickly. Five, not having an emergency fund. Life doesn't always go your way, let's face it. And occasionally you need money to get yourself out of a jam. For instance, your washer might break down, your automobile might abruptly stop operating, or you might lose your job. Since almost everything in life is expensive, it is crucial to have an emergency fund set up. Failure to do so would be financially disastrous. Unfortunately, according to a 2019 Federal Reserve survey, roughly 40% of American adults wouldn't be able to handle a $400 emergency with cash, savings, or a credit card charge that they could rapidly pay off. In order to raise the $400, almost 27% of those polled would have to borrow money or sell something, and 12% wouldn't be able to do it at all. Fortunately, you can avoid being one of these folks. This money can be easily saved. All you need to do is ask your employer to set up an automatic 10% withdrawal from your pay, which will divert a portion of your paycheck to an emergency savings account. How do you determine when you've saved enough, though? The majority of financial experts advise you to save up to six months' worth of costs. One year's worth is a wonderful objective to set, though, if you want to be extra cautious. Sticks. Having just one source of income. The majority of people live their lives with one source of income, and a salary is often how this cash is received. Unfortunately, despite what many might think, jobs are not always secure. In reality, more than 21 million Americans lost their jobs in 2018, which meant that if your employment was your only source of income, your income abruptly stopped. You should picture yourself as a tree when it comes to your sources of revenue. Do trees produce fruit from a single branch only? Simple no is the response. Like them, you ought to have several branches that bear flowers and fruits. You should continue to create and pick up new skills so you can make your money work for you. This is a sensible and secure way to get some sleep at night. 7. Relying heavily on credit cards. Credit cards can be a practical tool for many people when making purchases. They may, however, be a one-way trip to debt for others. Although some business applications require credit cards, relying on them excessively might lead to financial catastrophe. Using credit cards encourages impulsive purchases. It offers you the impression that anything is within your means with just one simple swipe. In fact, a 2001 MIT research indicated that using a credit card to pay instead of cash can increase purchases by up to 100%. In order to avoid spending too much money on credit, make it a practice to pay with cash. When you make a payment with cash, you are physically handing over money, and compared to when you make a purchase using credit, you'll feel the financial impact of the purchase far more as you watch your wallet go smaller. Eight being scared to take financial risks. No risk, no profit, as they say. You must calculate the risks you take because you must take them in order to gain money. For instance, investing in index funds carries a larger risk than keeping cash in a savings account. However, if you keep your money in a savings account, it will never grow and will only earn the standard 9% interest. A calculated risk that, in my opinion, is worth taking is investing in an index fund, for instance, which tracks the trends of the entire stock market and historically has produced returns of 7% yearly. 9. Saving rather than investing. Money that is kept in a bank depreciates over time as a result of inflation. However, money expands when it is correctly invested. It's that easy. I indicated in error number 9 that it's a mistake to be afraid to take financial risks. People who are afraid to take chances will save all of their money, allowing it to depreciate over time. Only enough money to cover your living needs and a cash emergency fund should be kept in a savings account. In other words, you shouldn't just save for the sake of saving. You need to save to invest. Without a solid plan, money saved will ultimately be squandered on unimportant items. For instance, if you put money in your bank, you might be tempted to buy a new automobile, some designer clothing, or go out to eat. Instead, you should invest that money, whether it be in the form of stocks, real estate, REITs, or startups, to make it work for you. All of these options provide a chance to generate new revenue streams, which is considerably more financially rewarding than allowing your money to lose value while it is kept in a bank. 10. Having only one bank account. For a number of reasons, having just one bank account is dangerous. First off, managing your finances will be quite challenging if you only have one bank account because you'll need to put all of your emergency funds and college savings in one place. If you overspend with this money, you run the danger of not having access to emergency funds or funds for your education when you need them. You should therefore have a minimum of three bank accounts. One should be set aside for unanticipated emergencies. 
Another account, which I'll refer to as a play account, can be used for your daily expenses. Your play account is the sum of money you set aside for leisure or travel. And you ought to create an untouchable account if you want to go any further. You may automate your savings process and make sure your wealth increases over time by using this account as a savings account to which payroll deductions are made each month. Thanks for watching. If you want to go from the life you have to the life you deserve, then hit the subscribe button now. And if you want to learn some money tips by Dave Ramsey, click on this video and let's get started.